In 1980, Guatemala, the country where I was born, was controlled by the military. They made war against anyone who dared to oppose it. It was common knowledge that anyone who spoke publicly against the military was either silenced or made to disappear from the face of the earth. My parents decided that there was no freedom in Guatemala. So they decided to emigrate to the United States in search of better living conditions, leaving me and my siblings in the care of our grandparents and uncles. A couple of years later, they were able to bring us to the United States, where we started a life of relative peace and prosperity. Fast forward to the mid-1990s. I had gotten married, and I already had a little family of my own, when suddenly the phone rang in the middle of the night. I answered the phone, and I heard the cries of my mother. She had just been told that one of her brothers living in Guatemala had been kidnapped, beaten, taken into the woods, and executed. As far as she knew, her brother had been part of a group of people in Guatemala that invaded some vacant land, built their homes, and refused to leave the land until the government agreed to sell them the land at a very cheap price. After years of negotiations, the government finally agreed to their demands. But the night before the agreement was to be signed, the leaders of the group, among them my uncle, were all assassinated. My mother needed to go back to Guatemala to make the arrangements for a funeral. But because of her limited English, she needed me to call the airline and buy the tickets for her. I agreed to make the phone call next thing in the morning, and I hung up the phone. But as soon as I hung up the phone, the feelings overwhelmed me, and crying, and shaking, I huddled myself in a corner of the room. My wife tried to console me, but I screamed at her. You don't understand. You don't understand. I kill him. I kill him. You see, for years I had secretly hope even pray that my uncle made a fate as horrible, painful, and terrifying as the one he did. In my mind, it was the only fair punishment for all the sexual abuse he inflicted on me. I explained all of this to my wife, and I asked her to keep her a secret from my mother because I knew that she already had too much shit on her plate. And I also asked her to please go to my mother's house and make the telephone call for me because I knew that I couldn't bring myself to do it. The next morning, my wife went to my mom's house and tried to make the phone call. But my mom was really upset that neither my sister nor I had agreed to help her. My mother was calling us bad names, Cerote, Pisado, hijo de la gran puta, and a lot of other bad Guatemala names. My sister, who lived with my mother, got upset because of a name calling, and she started a heated argument with my mother. My wife, trying to make the situation better, decided to tell my mom everything that I had confided to her the night before. But when my sister heard about the revelations, she told some revelations of her own. My uncle never abused my sister, but my sister had our grandfather to thank for her own history of sexual abuse. 
Itungao, Tabaki Guatemala, under the excuse of kissing my sister goodnight and under the cover of darkness, our grandfather did a lot more than talk my sister in. A couple of hours later, I went to pick up my wife from my mom's house, and she caught me up on everything they had been talking about. When my mom saw me, she started to cry because she felt responsible for everything that happened to us. She got down on her knees and she begged for forgiveness. Perdoname, perdoname, she kept saying to me. I hugged her and I told her that she had nothing to be sorry for because she had done nothing wrong. Then I went to my sister and I spoke to her about the horrible things that happened to us. Together, through our pain and tears, we were able to face our demons. That day, my sister and I started a new journey, a journey of healing and forgiveness. That day, my mother took a journey back to Guatemala to bury two people, her brother who had been killed and her father, who from that moment on was dead to all of us. That day, my sister and I, who years before had left Guatemala in search of freedom, that day when we finally spoke about our sexual abuse, that day when we acknowledged the pain and suffering we lived through, that day we finally had our first taste of freedom. Thank you. And uh, this gentleman that won this evening, this, oh, sorry, this is now his second win for the moth in like less than two months. Uh, he won at Martyrs last month, and now he's won at Haymarket, and he will be going to Park West twice and telling stories twice because he's damn good at it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your winner this evening, Mr. Nestor Gomez. <laughs> He wants to say something. I didn't have the chance to say that I wanted to dedicate this story to my sister, who not only told me, but showed me how to be strong. Thank you.